As a new developer, we often overlook the fact that Django seamlessly converts models and model changes into corresponding database schema modifications. Through our learning journey so far, we've come to understand that the migration process involves two essential steps, make migrations and migrate. So in this tutorial, we delve deeper into the migration file itself, examining its structure and content and gain insights into the common migration operations. By delving deeper into the migration file, we aim to establish a clearer understanding of how these operations that are described in the migration file directly correlate with the alterations we make in the Django model. So let's delve into the anatomy of the Django migration file to understand its structure and components. Just to quickly recap on the file name, we can see that the migration file names increment by one every time we create a new migration file. So we start from the initial migration file, so 001, and you can see then it continues 002 and so on. So the second component of the naming structure normally consists of some sort of descriptive name. So here we have a descriptive name which should provide some context about the changes encapsulated within the migration file. So Django does its best to generate this, but of course we've seen in previous tutorials that we can rename our own migrations. The migration file begins with the necessary imports to access Django's migration framework and other dependencies. So common imports include the from DB import, import migrations, and then possibly imports related to models or other dependencies specific to the migration. So inside the migration file, here we have a migration class that subclasses the migration.migration. So this class represents the migration itself and contains all the metadata about the migration. Here you can see that we have two sections, the dependencies and operations. In addition to that, we might also have some other custom logic. So we might define our own functions within this migration class. So first of all, the dependencies, which is normally defined first, the dependencies attribute specifies dependencies between migrations. It's essentially a list or of tuples indicating the apps and migration names that this migration depends on. So Django uses this information to determine the order in which migrations should be applied. The operations attribute of the migration class lists the database schema operations to be performed by this migration. So these operations might include creating, altering, deleting database tables, fields, indexes, constraints, and other schema related tasks. Now in more advanced cases within the migration class, you may find or may start to create some additional methods. So this is going to define some custom operations or logic specific to the migration. So these methods are invoked during the migration process to perform specialized tasks uh, beyond the standard schema operations. Now, something you will only find once, or you should find only once in the first migration is the initial variable. So that is set to true. So that should only be found in the first or initial migration. Right, so now we have a general overview of the sections of our migration file. Let's look more closely at the different sections within our migration class. So first of all, the dependencies. So you notice that the initial migration here doesn't have any dependencies. It's the first migration. Remember here, the dependencies is really providing a mechanism for managing the order of migrations and ensuring that the database schema changes are applied in a coherent and consistent manner across different environments. So here you can see in the second migration, there is a reference point to the first migration, indicating that before we run this migration, the second migration, we first must run the migration that's defined here in the dependencies. Now here you might find, or you can specify multiple dependencies by including multiple tuples in the dependencies list here. 
So Django will resolve these dependencies and apply the migrations in the correct order based upon their dependencies. In actual fact, in many cases, Django can sometimes automatically detect dependencies based upon the relationship between models and changes made in the previous migration. However, there are always scenarios where manual specification of dependencies become necessary, especially in more complex migration scenarios. Looking at the dependencies, we can see that each tuple will represent the dependency of a specific migration from a particular app. So the first uh, element here of the tuple is the name of the app, and then the second element will be the name of the migration. So that brings us down to operations. So there is a, a clear correlation between the changes that we've made in the model and then the operations that have been described here within the operations list. So whenever we make a, a change to the model, for example, we will find there will be a corresponding operation to correlate and to make those changes in the database. Now, this is a very interesting concept, the ability to be able to define changes within our models file, and then for Django to actually then be able to determine what type of operations are required to perform those changes on the database. So Django determines changes made in the database model by comparing the current state of the model and its previous state. So it achieves this by examining the models.py files in the project apps and then compares them with the records stored in the Django migration history. So here, um, let's imagine we start a new project again. We run and create an initial migration. So what we've done, you can see in this initial migration for this inventory app, it's a clear record of everything related to the, all the tables that have been defined within our models file, including the fields um, and the field attributes. So whenever we make a change to our models, Django is able to look at the previous migration and check the current model against the migration file. So if we were to, let's just look at the description here in the attribute table. If we were to go into our models and change that, if we can quickly find it, the attribute, if we were to change something here, say null to false, it could then compare that to the initial migration and determine that a change potentially has been made and therefore go ahead and create an operation which describes that change so it can then be migrated and performed on the database. The changes can be made then on the actual database. So within this process of comparing um, the model with the migration record, Django will create operations. So for each change, an operation would be generated. So that's what we're looking at here in this example migration file. Within the operations, we have here, for example, a create model. So it looks like potentially we created a new model within our models file. Django has detected that and then is then going to create a new model using migrations.createModel. Now notice that there are multiple types of operations. So here we have migration.createModel. Here we have migration.add field and alter field and so on. If you type in Django migration operations, that should take you to the Django documentation page for migration operations. And you can see here on the right hand side, you can drill down to all the schema operations that might be found here in the migration file. So instead of writing raw SQL statements directly in the migration files, we use schema operation classes provided by Django Migration Framework. So these classes provide a higher level of, of, of abstraction, if I can get the words out, higher level of abstraction, making it easier to define and manage database schema changes using Python code. So behind the scenes, Django translates these schema operation classes into appropriate SQL statements for specific database backends be that Postgres SQL, MySQL, SQL Lite. So this abstraction allows Django to support multiple database backends without requiring developers to write specific SQL code. So if we take a look at this create model here, then this would probably relate to a create table, depending on the different type of technology you're using. So this 
would be potentially the SQL that is generated. So a migration crate model would be a crate table and then the name of the model and then the fields. So loosely speaking, that's how it's going to then be translated into SQL. And by utilizing these class, it creates a consistent approach and a clear way of translating this type of operation into an SQL operation. Now, eventually our database might scale or get to a point where we want to use more advanced features of our underlying database technology. So as our database scales grows and we think more about performance and other advanced operations, Django does provide the migrations.runsql operation. And this allows us to execute raw SQL statements directly against the database within a migration. So this operation is particularly useful for performing database operations that are not directly supported by Django RM or other built-in migration operations. We did mention that we were able to create custom methods or logic within the migration class. Now to initiate them, we would potentially call it from the operations list. So here we had a custom method called custom function, and you can see we are calling that through the migrations.run Python operation, and then we are defining the custom method. So that would be a typical approach for calling custom methods or logic within the operations list. So hopefully that's given you a deeper understanding of the anatomy of the Django migration files and a surface level overview of how Django would actually determine or identify changes in the first place. From that perspective, we can really see the importance of the migration file and how Django requires it to actually determine if changes have been made in the model.